something that I, I really try to instill on uh, my good friends and family who who suffer with addiction and mental illness is um, w one thing that kind of gets overlooked within addiction and coming out of it. Like, all right, you're, you've sobered up, you've detoxed, there you are, throw you into the world. If you don't change your general habits, it's, it's pointless because contentment comes from purpose and purpose comes from responsibility. If you don't start taking on responsibility when you're kind of rebuilding your mind and your life, then you're never going to get anywhere any, any further. Like immediately when, uh, when you begin the process of restructuring your life, like you need responsibility, you need, you need accountability. And that's helped me so much in this community. Uh, even just, just being a member of this community and being held accountable for like, okay, these people depend on me. Um, I said, I'm going to do this. I told this person that I'm going to be here at this time. I I have to do it. You know, other, otherwise you're just sitting in a room by yourself. Like, why am I so upset? I, I, I deal with this with my, <laughs> my friends all the time. They call me after they're like, yeah, I've been, I've been so, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Oh, what are you, what are you doing with your time? It's like, Oh, I'm just playing video games and fucking jacking off and blah, blah. And I'm like, well, no shit. Yeah. You're not being an actual person. Like just because you're breathing doesn't mean you're living, brother. Like fucking wake up, go yeah. go find someone who needs some help. Even if you help. are sober, that still sounds pretty miserable. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, dude, you you have no purpose in your life. Go find someone who who needs some help, someone who's worse off than you, and 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 lend them a hand. Dedicate yourself to something. Take a responsibility. You see someone struggling with something day in day out, be like, I'll take care of that every day from here on out. That's the first step. And then what, what you'll realize and that I realized pretty immediately when I was getting sober is that there were vacuums all over my family and my life where someone needed to take a leadership role. Somebody needed guidance. Someone needed uh, a hand continuously with something. And when I was in addiction, no one was calling me for shit. No one, like, the world seems so small. It's like, well, I could either be doing this high or I could be sitting here alone sober. It's like, no. As soon as you get sober, if you go out and look for it, your family needs you. You know, your, uh, your lover needs you. Your community needs you. The world needs things from you. You have a sacred duty on this planet, and it may be small. It may seem irrelevant. It may seem stupid. But, you know, uh, it's goddamn important. Every, everyone's sacred duty and, and, and personal responsibility on this planet is incredibly important. Yeah. And it's the vacuums that create the corruption in our society. You know, it's like, so that's what I tell people. It's like, you don't see the opportunities around you. You don't see all the help that other people need because you're not available. And they know that, you know, so get off your butt, do something. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Addiction. What else could you touch on, on addiction? Cause I'm, you guys get flooded with that online too, as well. Um, uh, it's usually a story of, Hey, you helped me get clean sort of thing. Or, um, reaching out of where they should start or they want to start. You have any kind of advice other than what you just gave? I would say that, um, preparation, uh, for harder times is certainly a part of it because the general process of, um, a part of the general process of getting sober is also, completely restructuring the way that your mind works. Because even after I'd gotten sober, I was an absolute rage machine and delusion machine still for years, you know, and, and I really had to combat that. And I really had to target the areas of delusion and really isolate them and be like, why, why does this raise my defense mechanisms? 
And it's like, oh, because I have abandonment issues and goodbyes are hard for me. And maybe I need to restructure the way that I, that I approach that. And when I'm going into these situations, be aware of the fact that I have the potential to respond with, with rage, like just having the uh, wherewithal to understand yourself, like evaluating yourself really, because like, once you get sober, that's when, you know, a lot of the real work begins. You, you, you have to really start <clears throat> untying all those knots because your mind is the way that your mind works and your receptors work. It's like something basically events and or triggers are tied directly to patterns of behavior. So X happens, you immediately go here, even though the situation isn't actually that it's kind of like, uh, you know, when I get out of bed, uh, jump out of bed, butt naked in the middle of the night, pull out my AR-15 <laughs> and, and, and run outside with a light because the dog barked. And then I realize it's cause, uh, you know, the, uh, the bar now, the, 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 yeah, the barred <laughs> owl howled and my dog's an idiot and barked at it. Um, it's kind of like that, but which is not a bad thing. Like I, I think, uh, I, I think, you know, I, I think men should get out of bed butt naked and rush outside into danger. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I'm not going to stop doing that. <laughs> if my dog barks at, at anything, I'm, I'm, I'm outside, uh, dick and all, you know, <laughs> um, but, um, uh, but learning those patterns because it was very useful to me in life. Like I, you know, for, for years on the road, um, sleeping outside, being homeless, hopping trains, hitchhiking. I was a very, very reactive, violent person Yeah, because on, I had to be Yeah, I, you're on the edge 24 seven. I was in situations many times in my life, um, you know, under a bridge or in a situation where there, there was no one to stop the fight. Either, either they were going to be unconscious at the end of it or I was. And it, I mean, there's, a, there is a certain amount of trauma that comes with that. I use that word only because there's not a, a much better word. I feel like our generation uses that word way too often and should be reserved for, um, real trauma, uh, deep trauma. Um, but, um, learning to pull that back and not react in such a serious way to anything, uh, became really hard, you know, um, on a daily basis, just freaking out and then like coming to and being like, Whoa, this was not <laughs> that serious. Like everything is okay. Right. Um, you need to calm down, be able to pull back excess, you know, then, being able to have oh, yeah. self-awareness that like, this is not the situation because it's hard because that's useful. Um, it has been extremely useful. It's kept me safe, you know, in life. It saved my life. Um, being able to go from zero to 10 and seriously injure somebody is a fucking important thing to be able to do. If you if you're interested in protecting yourself or your family, or your community or your society in general, yeah, there has to be an army of people ready to do that. If if we if we want any uh, any amount of freedom, you know, there there has to be. Um, but learning to dial that back. Uh, learning in general, the patterns in your mind, the things that you're going to react to, the things that, that are going to trigger you. Like that's one of the, that's one of the fundamental first things to do when you're stepping back into the world as a new person. It's like to be, to be willing to critically evaluate yourself <clears throat> right. and crit and be able to admit you're wrong, <clears throat> be able to lay it down, be like, I'm sorry. <clears throat> my defense mechanisms got out of control and that's my fault. I have to do better. 
Yeah. A lot of it's personal responsibility. Yeah. In Just general. owning up to whatever it is. Yeah. Because even, like, I guess my, one of my philosophies is, like, even if something is someone's fault, like, even if something in your life is, like, directly someone's fault, from a util, utilitarian perspective, it's, it's, it's like, relatively useless <clears throat> to sit and dwell on even if it is someone's fault. Like, it, it's, it's not actually helpful because you still have to deal with it. Like, and all you're doing by sitting around and, and being resentful and bitter, it, all you're doing is postponing that healing. Like, you have to heal from it. Someone hurt you. Uh, you, you feel an injustice in your life. Life isn't fair. Life is not fair for anyone. I don't give a shit. Like, yeah, maybe like a small, like I point zero 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 one percent someone with fucking, you know, Jeff Bezos or something. But he, you think he's happy? Bullshit. <laughs> he ain't fucking happy. That motherfucker. <laughs> you think these people are happy? You think Elon Musk is happy? No. It's like, I think so. You still got to deal with yourself. Like, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter... Who did what, where, it doesn't matter who threw the first punch. You got to clean up the mess in your life. You've got to look the ones you love in the eye and, and hold dignity. You know, you have to do that. Yeah. 